Hello, I am here to teach you the first chapter of physics, physical one. In this chapter, we start with the first thing that you must know is science. The word science originates from the Latin verb scientia, meaning to know. The Sanskrit word vikyan and the Arabic word ilm convey similar meaning, namely knowledge. It will be no exaggeration to say that Science is another word for knowledge. The earliest history of man reveals that man has continuously made serious attempts to understand his environment. These attempts were mostly the outgrowth of the inquiring mind of man. However, there were situations when man was forced to have an insight into his environment to ensure his survival in a hostile world. The modern day man now undoubtedly understands much of his environment and natural phenomena like repetition of day and night, repetition of seasons, earthquakes, rainbows, solar and lunar eclipses, etc. Not only this, the modern day man is able to predict events. He has also succeeded to a certain degree in controlling his environment. A simple question arises in our mind, what has made all this possible? The one word answer is science. There are two types of the sciences the physical science and the biological science. The physical science is a science which deal with non-living things. The some branches of the physical sciences are physics, chemistry, geology, geography, astronomy, astrology, etc. Biological science is a science which deals with living things. The branches of the biological sciences are botany, zoology, or anthology, anthropology, etc. It is due to the use of the scientific attitude and scientific method that the tremendous growth of the science has taken place. The scientific attitude requires an open-minded approach towards solving problems. If the solution for a problem works satisfactorily, it is adopted. If not, a better solution to the same problem is found. Scientific method is the step-by-step -step approach used by a scientist in studying natural phenomena and establishing laws which govern this phenomenon. The scientific methods involves the following steps. 
Number one is taking the large number of systematic observations through the controlled experiments. Studying these observations and looking for their logical behavior based on the qualitative and quantitative reasoning. Mathematical modeling is a third step that is suggesting some model to account for the observed behavior that is giving a mathematical formula. Fourth step is the theoretical prediction of what is not actually observed on the basis of the suggested model. And the fifth step is the verification or the falsification of the model. The study of the science in journal and physics in particular is based on the systematic observations, logical reasoning, model making and theoretical prediction. All the four steps taken together constitute what we call the scientific method. It is through the scientific method that we try to arrive at a valid interpretation of the natural phenomena around us. The scientific method helps us to describe either a physical phenomena or the behavior of a physical system. This gives us what we call theory. The scientific theory is the name given to the set of the limited number of laws which explain the phenomena. Theory should not only be self-consistent but also consistent with all known experimental data. Any discrepancy between theory and experimental data is very crucial. It will be interesting to know that small discrepancies have proved very significant in the progress of physics. For example, initially it was thought that Earth has a flat surface. But when ships in a sea were observed from a large distance, it was concluded that the surface of the earth is not flat but spherical in shape. At a later stage, measurements of acceleration due to gravity at different places of earth led us to conclude that the shape of earth is oblate spheroidal. Secondly, a theory was developed that the earth was the center of the universe and it was supposed that the sun, planets and the stars move around the earth. This theory was called geocentric theory. However, in 1543, a different theory called heliocentric theory was advanced by Nicholas Copernicus. According to this theory, all the planets, including the Earth, revolve around the Sun. Thank you. Next things we will discuss in our next lecture.